The terrible events that have been taking place in the Kaaba make the whole world constantly worried. Not just Muslims, but everyone around the world. People do not just look at storms or floods from the simple perspective that it is a natural phenomenon. It is a sign from God. It seems that he wants to send a precious message to us. Things become more complicated when snow falls in an arid land like the Arab country. This is worrying. Will this be salvation or punishment? Join us in today's video to find answers to these questions. Don't forget to take a few seconds to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to watch the latest videos on our channel. A video clip of heavy snowfall in Mecca's Grand Mosque has been circulating on various social media platforms recently. The video appeared on YouTube and Facebook and showed heavy snowfall close to the Grand Mosque and pilgrims enjoying the rare phenomenon. The 55-second video appeared on YouTube channel Basme Masarat on Saturday and later shorter clips from the video are being shared on various platforms. The video shows men and women clad in pilgrims' clothes walking next to the mosque with snowfall all around them. People are seen using their mobile phones to shoot videos and photos, while others are seen taking selfies. Even a policeman is seen carrying an umbrella. Several areas in Saudi Arabia, including Mecca, have recorded rainfall, causing floods in different parts of the country. The Kaaba, a large stone structure constituting a single room with a marble floor, lies at the heart of the Holy Mosque in the holy city of Makkah. The Kaaba is Islam's holiest building. It now stands some 60 feet high, and each side is approximately 60 feet in length. The Kaaba is the focal point around which the Holy Mosque is built. The four walls of the Kaaba are covered with a black curtain that reaches to the ground and is fastened to the Shadhawan with copper rings. The door of the Kaaba is set in the southeast wall, about seven feet from the ground. Inside, there are pillars which support the roof. The interior is furnished with many gold and silver lamps. On the inner walls, several bands of inscriptions record the many repairs done to the Kaaba. The Holy Quran makes it clear that Abraham and his son Ishmael were the true founders of the Kaaba, together building the Holy Shrine dedicated to the worship of the one true God. Five times each day, more than a billion Muslims around the world turn to face the direction of the Kaaba to offer their prayers to the one true God. It is also, of course, the focal point of the Haji when, once each year, some two million pilgrims converge on the holy city of Mecca. Set in the eastern corner of the Kaaba is the Black Stone. The black stone predates the birth of Islam, but now, set in gold, forms an integral part of the Kaaba. In the course of the pilgrimage, the Hajis will kiss or touch the black stone, not because the black stone is holy in itself, but because it was kissed by the Prophet Muhammad. It can be said that Kaaba is one of the holiest places of Muslims. However, Many terrible events are happening in Kaaba. Besides snowfall, Mecca had to suffer from many disasters in recent days. Flood, storm, earthquake, lightning, and so on. Heavy rainfall in Saudi Arabia, particularly in Mecca, has caused widespread flooding, prompting discussions on the impact of global climate change, the need for emergency planning and infrastructure maintenance, and the importance of addressing both natural and human causes of floods. Heavy rainfall in Saudi Arabia caused Mecca to flood, disrupting worship, displacing pilgrims, and prompting discussion on preventing future occurrences due to the country's diverse weather patterns. Unusual weather patterns in Mecca, including sandstorms, heavy rainfall, and rare snowfall in northwestern Saudi Arabia, have sparked discussions about the impact of global climate change. Heavy rainfall in Mecca caused devastating flooding and damage due to overwhelmed drainage systems and altered natural water channels. Flooding in Mecca 
halted prayers at the mosque for maintenance, with devastating consequences for both humans and animals. Flooding in Mecca has long-term implications. Authorities need to study the causes and prioritize safety in Saudi Arabia. Not only that, a large number of locusts attacked Kaaba when Muslims were praying in this holy city. It suddenly appeared shocking to people there. Everything happening in Kaaba makes people worried about the real meaning of it. Is it natural occurrences or deep spiritual meaning from God? People said that it's a sign of the end times, and God wants to warn us to prepare for that event. Snow in the Bible is mentioned multiple times in the context of describing something white. When the Lord mentions that the scarlet sins will be as white as snow, it suggests the Bible depicts snow as pure and devoid of sins and also relates it to forgiveness. Snow is also depicted as a medium of refreshment as the snow-fed mountains are associated with a refreshed life. Among Christians, snow is an omen of merriment and positive changes. Some think there's a different explanation that the weather could be a sign of the end times. They offered a fresh and biblical perspective on the latest news from Arab Saudi, explaining that the prophet Isaiah speaks repeatedly of deserts blooming in his description of the end of days. The arid desert shall be glad, the wilderness shall rejoice, and shall blossom like a rose, Isaiah 35, 1 says. Meanwhile, Isaiah 43, 19 says, I am about to do something new. Even now it shall come to pass. Suddenly you shall perceive it. I will make a road through the wilderness and rivers in the desert. According to the biblically minded, the abnormal presence of snow in typically dry, hot areas could be the rivers in the desert, the prophet says, will indicate the end of the world. In a more optimistic interpretation of the unusual weather, Isaiah also speaks of snow as a good omen that signifies God's forgiveness in 118. For most people, thinking about the Saudi Arabian desert probably conjures up images of sand dunes baked by relentless sunshine. However, global warming has made Saudi's desert climate even hotter in recent years, probably exceeding the temperatures of the Prophet Muhammad's time about 1,400 years ago. These phenomena that occur almost side by side also make the public wonder, especially Muslims. That is because Saudi Arabia is a flat country with many desert areas with no water. There are very few plants and most of the water comes from wells and rainwater. For this reason, it feels extraordinary that Saudi Arabia is now experiencing a flood disaster, even covered in snow. But this is not the first time since 2020 Heavy rain and snowflakes have fallen in the country, ruled by King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. This climate anomaly has been visible in the last two years. It is speculated that the cause is global warming and increasingly extreme climate change. However, as a people guided by his words in the Al-Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, Muslims need to see this phenomenon from another perspective, religion, not just experts' explanations. So how do the Al-Quran and Hadith view these two phenomena in the Arab lands? Is this a sign that doomsday is getting closer? Previously, in a Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad had mentioned what the signs of the approaching doomsday would be like those. One of these signs is that the Arab land has become a green land decorated with meadows and rivers. It is explained in the Hadith from Abu Huraira. The day of judgment will not come until the Arab land is again green with plants and rivers. There is one word that needs to be highlighted in the Hadith of the Prophet saw above, namely the word return. This word implies that in the beginning, the Arab land was a fertile region, not barren, as we see today. When connected with climate change in Saudi Arabia, high rainfall and falling snow, 
Saudi Arabia may become fertile land. The words of the Prophet in the Hadith above are also likely to occur in the next few years. For this reason, we as Muslims need to see this phenomenon through the lens of faith, to be self-aware and continue to remember Allah SWT. Because we do not know for sure when the end of the world will come, as Allah SWT says in the following verse of the Al-Quran. And do you know, maybe the day of doomsday is near. Q.S. Al-Ahzab 63 Disasters related to piety? Through the Al-Quran, Allah has said that the faith or purity of the inhabitants of a region is directly proportional to the blessings Allah will give these residents. On the other hand, Allah will also give torment and suffering to those who deny his religion, as stated in the following Al-Quran Surah Al-Araf, verse 96. If only the inhabitants of the lands had believed and were pious, we would have surely bestowed upon them blessings from the heavens and the earth, but they denied our verses. Then we punished them for their actions. Q.S. Al-Araf 96. Even so, we have no right to judge the inhabitants of the Arab lands that they have denied his word. However, even if the country's rulers or officials did terrible things, unscrupulous citizens' immoral, corrupt and negligent attitudes can invite God's punishment as a disaster. If so, God's warning in the following should be the primary concern of all parties. So do the people of these countries feel safe from our torment, coming to them at night, when they are sleeping? Or do the inhabitants of those countries feel safe from our punishment coming upon them when the sun rises, when they are playing? So, do they feel safe from Allah's unexpected punishment? No one feels safe and Allah's punishment except the losers. And is it not clear to those who destroy a land after disappears its inhabitants, that if we willed, we would certainly punish them for their sins. And we sealed their hearts so that they could not hear. Lessons. Q.S. Al-Araf 97 100 From books to movies and from TV shows to podcasts, it's not hard to find many wide-ranging opinions about the end times, the apocalypse, or hints of an impending rapture. When we're faced with tragic world events and the presence of evil, we might be tempted to search for signs of the end rather than look toward God's word for answers. The signs of the end sound familiar and you might be able to think of a few examples that fall into these categories of signs. We see the glimmer of hope that Jesus reveals in verse 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. The question is how to endure. Endurance doesn't mean we're just surviving until the end and Jesus returns. A central part of Jesus' message was to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. As believers, we continue in this mission to bring heaven's culture to the world. We aren't passive bystanders, but active agents to bring the light of Christ to earth, especially in the midst of troubling times. Jesus is clear, many will be deceived. Staying grounded in God's word and truly knowing the heart of Jesus and what he taught is an important part of being alert. There's no need to panic because we know our ultimate hope is found in Christ. Let's read the Gospels. Find out who Jesus really is and the grace, hope, and mercy he offers. Find a Bible reading plan that goes through the Gospels every day. You'll get a clear picture of Christ and you'll find wisdom and life in what he taught. The next thing is to be obedient. You have been placed on earth in this time in history, in your family, workplace, school, etc for a specific purpose and reason. Do what you're called to do for the glory of God and the good of others. God has gifted you with unique abilities 
to serve the people around you. The Holy Spirit in you is a seal setting you apart for kingdom work. That work can happen in the church, but it can also happen in your home, classroom, or your workplace. Jesus said in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matt 5.16 Pray and ask God to give you the eyes to see how you can be a light to other people right where he placed you. When Jesus talks about the end times, he also talks about the gospel being preached worldwide. Will you be a light for the gospel? Besides that, rest in the hope that Jesus will return. In the midst of turmoil, our faith is a strong anchor because Jesus will come again and make all things new. Philippians 4, 7 says that we have a peace that transcends understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, that peace is already ours. We don't have to succumb to chaos and fear. Carry the message of peace and hope to the places you go and the people you meet. Pray Philippians 4, 6, 7 when you feel anxious about the state of the world. Ask God to give your heart and mind rest as you fix your mind on Him. As we approach the end times, we should also be aware of the similarities and differences in the beliefs of different faiths, especially Islam and Christianity. Jesus is one of the greatest persons ever to have walked the earth. Two world faiths hold him in high regard. Islam holds him to be God's Messiah, prophet, and righteous servant. Christianity holds him to be all of the above and even more. Some Christians believe that Jesus is God the second person of the Holy Trinity. Some believe that he is the Son of God. Some take this title to mean the divine Son of God. Others think that Son of God is a title that can refer to a person who is especially favored by God, and that it refers to Jesus more so because he was favored by God to a remarkable degree. Hence, belief in Jesus is an element of faith that is common to Christianity and Islam, even though the two faiths believe in him differently. Both faiths hold Jesus in high esteem. Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus miraculously entered the world, that he worked mighty deeds on earth, that his exit was mysterious, and that his second coming will be spectacular. His miraculous entrance is hailed by Christians as the virginal conception, as is mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. The Quranic story of Jesus, as found in chapters 3 and 19, has many elements in common with Luke's Gospel, leading to the common interpretation and belief among Muslims in the virginal conception as well. Muslims also generally believe that Jesus will return to earth before the Day of Judgment. This belief is not clearly stated in the Quran, although two verses have been interpreted as possible references to this event. This belief is, however, stated in many sayings attributed to the Prophet Muhammad and found in the most authentic collections of his sayings. In short, Muslims and Christians share a common reverence for Jesus, and this can serve as a starting point for dialogue, leading to greater levels of mutual understanding, tolerance, and respect. Focusing on our commonalities, however, should not prevent us from being honest about our differences, for only in understanding our differences as well can we truly understand each other. How Christians and Muslims view the authority of Scripture One area of difference is the scriptural authority that settles questions for Muslims and Christians. For Christians, the Bible is the Word of God. Some Christians add that the Bible is the Word of God and the Word of Man, that it is through the Word of Man that the Word of God is mediated. Many Christians believe that the authors of the Bible were basically free to write according to their knowledge and experiences and that God controlled the process such that the result is in fact His Word without ceasing to be the words of the human authors. 
Some Christians believe that the process by which God inspired the writings that make up the Bible guarantees their inerrancy. Others believe that the Bible is free of error only in those matters on which human salvation depends. The dialogue between Christians and Muslims must continue, and this will, we hope, lead to a greater level of understanding, tolerance, and mutual respect. We have only sketched here some of the main issues that need to be discussed as starting points for the achievement of such mutual appreciation. These two world faiths together are followed by half of the world's population. If they work together, they can combat many of the ills that plague our world at present. And, uh, and that's all about what we want to share with you in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to update the latest videos. Hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye.